Hello everyone and welcome to Meeple Leaf Reviews. I'm Jeffrey Weber and today I'm going to be doing a before and after where I take a look at a game before and after my very first play. Today I'm going to be taking a look at Rising Sun. Now when I had first heard about this game, I heard about negotiation and alliances and I was initially turned off because that kind of thing doesn't really work with my game group but when it was on kickstarter i took the time and i read through the rule book and one thing stood out and kind of got me excited about the alliances in this game and that's because when you form an alliance there's a concrete benefit it's not just something that you decide hey we're going to work together and do something this turn no you get an actual concrete benefit in the gameplay when your ally selects a uh a political mandate card you're going to be able to get the bonus the same way that they do when you follow that action as well as when you're in the same territory as them you guys don't have to fight so that kind of integration of concrete benefit mechanisms into alliances uh, kind of turned that alliance from a negative to a positive for me the other thing that i think i'm going to like about this game is the way that the combat works it's not all about going out and fighting and winning every single battle. You have you can commit seppuka and you can kill all your figures in a region and gain uh, victory points that way. Or you could even potentially get the favor of the Imperial Poets so they're writing about you and you get uh, victory points for that instead of actually winning the combat. So I think it's going to be you maybe want to win some key combats but it's not about going out fighting and winning every single uh, time so it kind of takes the bite off of losing combats over and over again you can you can still get lots of victory points uh, elsewhere the other thing that's kind of cool about this game is each clan kind of starts off with their own special ability but you can build in additional uh, special abilities as the game goes out by uh, purchasing these season cards so you can kind of build a strategy up based on the cards that you choose to purchase so those are the things that i'm kind of really excited about i have really nothing negative going in for my expectations uh, of the game i think it's overall is going to be an enjoyable experience and i think i hope that everything uh kind of lines up with my my expectations towards the alliances and towards uh the combat so let's get it to the table we'll come back and see what i think of rising sun Hello everyone and welcome back. I just finished my first play of Rising Sun. Now I played it four player and it took us an hour and 52 minutes. So what are my first impressions? So I mentioned before going in that I thought the alliances would be pretty cool, how it would feel like there was a concrete bonus for being aligned with someone else. I definitely felt that uh, throughout that first game. At the end of the game, I was starting to think about, well, how, how can making those alliances matter? depending on how many actions people are going to get to select during a turn that might preferentially make you want to align with one person or another depending on who's in front maybe that might change up who you align with with and stuff like that or where you are located on the map the other thing that i mentioned is about the the asymmetry that you can that you start with and that you're going to build through buying these different season cards and I felt even with that starting ability that each of the clans have I felt very different from all the other clans at the board I kept being envious of other players and being like oh that's a really cool ability I wish I could do that or the other person I wish I I wish I could be the turtle clan and move my strongholds about or that even the dragonfly clan I thought was really cool where they can summon figures anywhere on the map so it really made me feel very different than other players as well as the cards that I chose to take made me feel even more different as the game uh, played out. The other thing that uh, that I mentioned before was about not always wanting to win each battle. And I definitely felt like there was some strategic battle play that could be going on. Because at the end of the game, you're going to get bonuses for each different uh region where you've won a battle throughout the game so you kind of not want, don't want to stay in one spot and keep winning battles there you want to spread out and win them in each of the different areas i kind of chose a no battling strategy i tried to do the seppuka uh getting a lot of points that way gaining honor didn't really work out i think you kind of want to win some battles but i don't like I said in the before segment, I think it's not about winning every single battle. You want to kind of win the key ones and try and siphon points off of 
the other battles that you're involved in. Overall, I thought the game was pretty enjoyable. It's not really grabbing me and, and forcing me uh, forcing me to want to play it over and over again. It's not really a game that's totally in my wheelhouse. I'm more of a Euro-style gamer. But even still, I found that there was very clean mechanisms. Everything was very clear in, in how it worked and how the game flowed. So overall, an enjoyable experience. And I would happily play the game again. So that's my first impressions of Rising Sun. If you liked the video, go down and hit the like button. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. And we'll see you guys next time.